Hey folks, this is Kalani. We have our first PTR build of the new year, and there's quite a bit to talk about. We have even more tier set changes. The Keystone Master achievement has had its requirements increased to make it harder to get in patch 9.2. There are some new class-specific cosmetic options to look forward to, and some interesting reputation items lingering just over the horizon. Let's jump right in. First up this week, we have some tier set changes to talk about. Restoration Druids have their much talked about changes, finally on the PTR. The two set bonus is now every three casts of Swift Mend grants you Incarnation Tree of Life for nine seconds. And then the four set is now Healing from Rejuvenation has a 25% chance to grant Renewing Bloom, healing over eight seconds. Swift Mend can also consume Renewing Bloom. The two set is definitely more interesting, giving you more access to a powerful cooldown, and it also gives you control over when it procs, assuming you're not using swift mend on cooldown anyway so you could save up that third swift mend for a period of intense healing just to take advantage of the free tree of life pretty cool overall the Assassination Rogue set bonus has also been changed to reflect the plans mentioned before the holidays. Shiv causes enemies within 15 yards to take 100% increased damage from your poisons and bleeds for 9 seconds. That's going to increase the potential of multi-dotting significantly, and it should end up being a fun set bonus to play around with. Outlaw Rogues have had their set bonus changed too. Instead of making your next between the eyes free, your next pistol shot will just automatically fire the free 6 combo point between the eyes instead. So not a huge functional change when all is said and done, but it might help keep things smoother. And then Protection Warriors also saw a small change. Consuming Rage grants stacks of Seeing Red, which will then transform into Outburst at 8 stacks. It also now gives you a free Ignore Pain when you use Shield Slam or Thunderclap, instead of making you choose between using those stacks offensively or defensively. That's a neat change. Having the stacks separate from the actual effect might mean you can save the Outburst proc for longer, while still getting Seeing Red stacks to work towards your next Outburst. Hopefully it works like that anyway and it's also nice having the offensive and defensive effects at the same time instead of having to choose between them. That's all of the tier set changes for now, but with this being the first week back after the holiday break, it's not too surprising that there aren't too many changes. I would expect to see some larger builds, potentially with a lot more tuning changes as development ramps up again. It's not just effects for tier sets changing, though the Warlock tier set headpiece has been modified yet again. I guess the pointy hood thing was still a problem, even though the colours had been changed and altered. They didn't really do that much last time they changed the hood, so it also doesn't surprise me that anyone who had a problem with it before still kind of had a problem after those small changes. But now the hood has been rounded off, so it's not pointy anymore. The colour hasn't changed too much, but the band of colour around the back now extends all the way up the hood, and there's more metal work on the helm as well. But the big addition here are the light horns. Now, I see where they were going with this. Horns have been associated with warlocks quite a bit. You know, the whole demon thing, right? And horns have worked really well in the past. But I'm not sure the colour scheme fits warlock at all. You don't really think of light and shiny things when you think of warlock. You think demonic, dark, evil stuff, right? So the theme doesn't work for me. But I also don't think the idea translated that well into an in-game model either. I see the idea. But when you look at the model, they kind of look like bunny ears when you look straight on, and they look like bananas from the side. It wouldn't be the first time we've had banana armor in the game, but at least they've made a big enough change this time to make you think at least that's not a pointy white hood. So at least they got that part right, I guess. In other news, the Keystone Master achievement will be changing as we head into patch 9.2 in the next season of Shadowlands. In season 2, the Keystone Master achievement required you to get 2,000 Mythic Plus rating during the season. For season 3, that's being increased up to 2,500 Mythic Plus rating. So you're going to need an additional 500 rating to get the same level of achievement. That might sound and seem like a massive bump in difficulty or requirements, but it will be offset by the addition of two new dungeons into the Mythic Plus dungeon pool. The Tazavesh Mega Dungeon is going to be split into two and each section will be available as Mythic Plus Keystones. That means all of the wonderful loot will scale up to the maximum Mythic Plus item level for patch 9.2 and it should all be upgradable with Valor points as well. 
It also means that you have two new dungeons to get rating for to add to your overall Mythic Plus rating pool. Two extra dungeons completed at plus 15 on Tyrannical and Fortified should net you about 500 Mythic Plus rating, which just and so happens to be the extra amount you need to get that 2500 rating needed for the new achievement. So on average, completing every dungeon on plus 15 should get you enough rating for the seasonal achievement, so that goalpost hasn't moved. Plus 15 is still your overall average goal, you just need to do the extra two dungeons as well as everything else. That does make the achievement more time consuming and more difficult to get in Season 3, but not in the way some players have been saying. You don't have to go higher than plus 15, but you do have to complete more dungeons this time. Moving on, this week's PTR build also introduced some new ghostful forms, and I have to say it's about time. There are so many cool class-specific visual skills that could have way more options and appearances. We have a lot of different spirit animal forms to work with. The wide variety of night face soul shapes attests to that, so why limit it to just a few options? Well, we will now have a spectral vulpine model and a spectral lupine model as well. This is the typical fox model that we've seen for a while now, as well as one of the new progenitor wolf models that can be found throughout Xerath Mortis. Both are sporting a spectral blue look, as you would expect, and you can learn these two new forms from new glyphs coming in the patch, so that should be fairly straightforward. Adding in new options for these abilities seems like such an easy win for the dev team, and it could be expanded upon so much further. There are a lot of abilities with class flavour that could have new unique visuals added in the form of glyphs. You have things like Shadow Form, various wing looking spells like Avenging, Wrath, Priest Buffs, or even Demon Hunter Wings themselves. You could change the look of stealth or the colour of spells and abilities like Blue Fire for Mages. Even though the glyph system isn't anywhere near as impactful as it used to be, I still think it has a lot of potential. Character customization options were a huge selling point and a massive hype drive for the Shadowlands expansion. Class and spec customization options via glyphs could be as equally interesting. So I hope we see more and more glyphs and new special visual options make their way into the game. Now another new item coming in patch 9.2 is the Infinite Augment Rune for this expansion. These infinite runes typically show up in the last patch of the expansion, and seeing as we're not getting any more major patches for Shadowlands, that would be 9.2. The Infinite Augment Runes are pretty self-explanatory, they provide you with the exact same bonuses as an Augment Rune, but they never run out. This means that when you buy this item, you will never have to buy or worry about Augment Runes for the rest of Shadowlands. That also means that prices for Augment Runes will probably tank pretty quickly after the patch goes live, so if you have a little stockpile of runes saved up, or they're one of the ways you make gold right now, I would try and sell those augment runes before 9.2 goes live, or at the very least within the first few weeks of 9.2. This item is tied to one of the rep grinds in the new patch, you'll have to get up to Exalted with the Enlightened. The Enlightened are the brokers who found their way into Xerath Mortis a long time ago, and they need help fighting back against the Jailer's forces. To earn rep with these lovely chappies, you just need to take part in the new zones content. Daily quests, story quests, world quests, rares, you know, the typical daily chores that have been tied to rep grinding for the past few expansions. Getting to Exalted will take a few weeks minimum, but when it's done, it's done, and you can walk away with your fancy new infinite augment rune. It will also cost you 40,000 gold, but if you use augment runes often enough, it will pay for itself rather quickly. If you've never used augment runes and you really don't care about the minor bonus they provide, well then this probably won't be all too interesting to you. But that's our quick news roundup for this week. What do you think of the increased requirements for the Keystone Master achievement? Does it make sense with the two new dungeons, or should the achievement be made easier now that there are more dungeons to complete? How do you feel about the changes to the Warlock tier set headpiece? Should that have been left the way it was, or do you think it looks better than it did previously? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon and to everyone who has subscribed on Twitch. You can see the names floating by on screen. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you never miss another video. Thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always I will see you next time.